Well, thanks for sitting down with me, Curtis. My pleasure, Mark. It's good to see you again. You too. We're here at the University of Saskatchewan to mark the grand opening of Energene's Canadian office. Mm -hmm. Your relationship with Energene goes back to 2015 when they worked with you as part of the International Wheat Genome Sequencing Consortium to decode the wheat genome. Yeah. What did that partnership look like and why was it so successful? Yeah, well, in, uh, my relationship goes back with NRG to, as you said, 2015, and it was uh, uh, it was largely the result of a, a large scale Genome Canada project that, that we had put forward. Uh, we had uh, become part of the International Wheat Genome Sequencing Consortium, which was an international group that really had the mandate um, to work together to to decode the complex wheat genome. Uh, the technology at the time uh, when we entered uh, that consortium and, and started that project um, didn't really allow for, for us to tackle uh, a wheat genome uh, in the way that, that, we, that we could with other crops. And so we're, we were using a very um, um, different approach where individual uh, countries within the consortium would sequence an individual chromosome and then collectively we would be able to complete the sequence. Um, but around that time we started to hear rumblings in the international community of, of, of this uh, Israeli company called NRGene and, um, and they've been working to assemble um, genomes of various species to, to a very high quality and, and very quickly in a, th you know, in a three to six week period. Um, so, so we spent some time as, uh, within our project to, to visit with NRGene and, and soon learned that the technology showed great potential for uh, the genome of wheat. And uh, we decided to move forward as a consortium and, and generate uh, that sequence. And it ultimately became um, you know, the gold standard sequence uh, that we now have for um, for, for, for wheat. So it was, a, it was a fantastic way to move a project forward very quickly, take advantage of, of technology that NRG developed uh, to get to the finish line quicker than, than we would have otherwise. Curtis, you became director of the Crop Development Center last year. Now you're increasingly using these genomics technologies in your work. Can you give us an idea of how this technology aids your specific breeding program? Sure. So in addition to being the director of the Crop Development Center, I'm responsible for uh, spring and durum wheat uh, breeding activities uh, at the CDC. And I also work with uh, Dr. Pierre Huckel, uh, who also um, focuses on spring wheat breeding. And, and we're both very much engaged in, in using uh, genomic technologies to support uh, selection in our breeding programs. Now, the advantage of having genome sequences um, is, is that you're able to, uh, in essence, you have a blueprint uh, of all the genes in the genome. Uh, you, you know their order relative to one another, which, which really makes it a lot easier to identify and develop useful DNA markers uh, that you can use in a selection program. Um, very recently, actually working in conjunction with NRGene, we, um, we completed the sequencing, as, again, as part of an international project called the 10 Genome Project, where we sequenced and assembled um, the, the, uh, the genomes of 10 different wheat varieties from around the globe. And, and having 10 allows you to compare, you know, what makes one variety different from another. So you, you're, you're able to do this comparative analysis. And that's so powerful because you can start then looking at what makes these varieties different, what makes them the same. And, and then start you using that information to develop selection and crossing strategies. Um, so so um, we're using this technology to aid in selection for disease resistance, resistance to abiotic stresses, um, and also uh, to, to, to select varieties that have uh, improved end use quality. Using marker and assisted selection and, and using the, the, the genomic tools that we've developed, um, you know, really allows us the opportunity to start 
uh, using all those markers together to, to stack or pyramid all of these good genes together into a single package. So when you think about that, that really improves the efficiency uh, of what it is that we're doing in the breeding program, knowing that what we put in the field has the best chance to become a variety. When you sequence the wheat genome back in 2016, what did that feel like for you? Yeah, I mean, it, it was it was obviously a very exciting time. I mean, um, wheat was largely um, lagging behind other major crops like you know soybean, uh, corn, uh, canola in terms of having rice, in terms of having these genetic and genomic resources available to to support research and 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 to develop tools for breeding. So I, rem I remember when we first started looking at the assembly, once it was first completed, um, and you know, one of the things we like to do is validate the work that, that, we've, that we're doing to make sure that it's correct. It's an important part of science. And um, I remember thinking, wow, this is, this is really good. Uh, what we have is, is a near complete product and, and, and will have an impact. Um, so it was a very exciting time, um, and 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 you know that that excitement pushed us uh, into developing additional projects at the international level to sequence multiple wheat genomes, and um, and 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 now that we have that information, expanding that even further, and and looking at ways that we can actually start uh, really characterizing well, each of the individual genes in the genome, what do they do? How do they work? When do they turn on? When do they turn off? And how does that relate to uh, productivity, disease resistance, uh, and so on? And, and those important traits that we're selecting in our breeding programs. And how did Energene's technology help you to do that? Well, Energene's technology was, was really designed around um, um, you know, taking, taking advantage of large volumes of sequence data. Um, when, we, when we sequenced uh, the wheat genome, in essence, what we did is, is we shattered it. We took the whole genome and shattered it into billions of small little pieces and then sequenced each of those in, in, in very small little bits. Uh, and then the hard work began of, of putting together this puzzle of small information uh, into the complete wheat genome puzzle. So you can imagine you have a 16 billion base pair puzzle. NRGene's technology was de developed to recognize patterns in uh, the puzzle and use computational biology to piece them in the right order uh, in, a, in a correct, precise in a, in, in a quick way. Um, so certainly having a, access to a technology like that really changed how it was that, the, um, that we were doing our work to, to assemble the, our, our genomes. Well, in, in terms of your long-term relationship with energy, and what does that look like? Uh, well, you know, we started our work with NRGene in 2015. You know, the task was the, the first genome assembly, and then we expanded that to multiple genome assemblies, completed that work, um, publishing it in Nature uh, in, in 2020. Um, and, and, and so a genome sequence itself really doesn't lend itself to improving plant breeding. You have to understand that, that genetic variability that you're working with. Um, so we've been conducting some additional experiments now with, with NR gene in wheat and in Durham wheat, um, where we develop, we've developed a, uh, a very precise genotyping um, a protocol that's very specific to our germplasm and our traits. So we spent a lot of time doing additional sequencing of our germplasm, comparing that, um, comparing that data and trying to understand that data in the context of what we're selecting for and what we're throwing away. And, and really with the idea to, to, to move towards more of a predictive breeding strategy. Um, so instead of using individual DNA markers one at a time, we're now going to take a whole genome perspective, take a look at the whole genome and, and use uh, the sequence information to, uh, to help us uh, piece together the right 
the best parts of genomes, uh, of various genomes, so that, that, that we can uh, develop varieties that, that are more productive. So energy and technology is helping you accelerate your work. It certainly it helps accelerate our decision making strategy, um, strategy in terms of of you know making making decisions to improve the efficiencies of, uh, of our breeding program. We can test material in the lab well before we put it into the field, make decisions so that we know what what, what with what we're putting into the field um, that that it will already be productive. It will have the disease resistance that we're looking for. And anytime we can do that, um, you know, we're improving the efficiency of our selection program and, and the probability uh, of identifying um, varieties that will perform better. Thank you for sitting down with me, Fred. I really appreciate it, Mark. Good to see you.